So I'll be covering the most important stimulus check information that you have to know. Folks, be sure to stay to the end of this video to find out the latest stimulus check information. There's a lot of great news that you want to know. Before the pandemic, you know, there are other signs of strength too. The number of small businesses up by 30% compared to before the pandemic. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, we've cut child poverty in America by more than 40%. Think about that. Millions of ch children who spent last Christmas in poverty will not bear that burden this holiday season. And the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, described it yesterday that it is, quote, a profound economic and moral victory for our country, end of quote. Since I took office, we've had a record job creation. 5.6 million new jobs since January 20th of this year. The unemployment rate has fallen to 4.6 percent. We're seeing more new small businesses, higher wages, and more disposable income. Fewer children in poverty. Fewer people getting unemployment checks. None of this was inevitable. It was because of the American Rescue Plan, which virtually every Democrat in Congress voted for and every Republican voted against. It was because of the hard work my administration has done to try to solve the challenges in our economy instead of just pointing fingers and complaining. Now, now it's time to build on our success and cut costs further for families. That's what my Build Back Better plan does. It will lower out-of-pocket costs for child care, elder care, housing, college, health care, and prescription drugs. These are the biggest costs that most families face. In fact, a new independent analysis released today showed that my Build Back Better plan would mean $7,400 in tax cuts and savings for the typical family with four kids, or excuse me, the typical family of four with two kids. 17 Nobel laureate, winners in the uh, Nobel economic winners have written a letter affirming that this bill will reduce inflationary pressure in the economy. Two of the leading rating agencies on Wall Street confirmed this month that my plan will not, will not add to inflationary pressures. In fact, they will, quote, take the edge off of inflation. Now my Republican friends are talking a lot about prices, but they're lined up against my Build Back Better plan, which would go right at the problem for rising costs for families. Why is that? I don't want to speculate on anyone's motive, but it's always easier to complain about a problem than to try to fix it. One Republican senator even said that rising prices were, quote, a gold mine, end of quote, for Republicans politically. Imagine rooting for a higher cost for American families just to score a few political points. The fact is, the Build Back Better plan is fiscally responsible. It's the first major piece of legislation in more than a decade that is not only fully paid for, but will generate more than $100 billion in deficit reduction. It fully covers the cost of its investments by making the largest corporations and the richest Americans pay a little more in taxes. Think about that, as that's a trade-off worth making, in my view, having those who have done very well pay their fair share in order to provide a little breathing room for millions of American families. But my critics don't seem to agree. They have a lot of speeches about high prices, supply chain, and other challenges we're facing, but they don't ha offer any answers. So they're just doing the no vote. That's their plan, vote no. But what does that mean? What does a no vote mean on this bill? Not on cable news, not on Fox, not in the real, in the real world, in your life, around your kitchen table. Well, here's what it's going to mean. It means for millions of American families, this bill, your your, that the bills you're paying right now for daycare could be substantially lowered, capped at 7 percent of your income. But the Republicans said, no, pay more. It means the bills you're paying right now to take care of your elderly parent could have been lower, a lot lower. But Republicans said, no, don't vote for this bill, pay more. It means the cost of your prescription drugs could have been lower, a lot lower. Republicans think that those 200,000 children, for example, who need regular doses of insulin should continue to pay as much as $1,000 a month instead of $35 a month. Think of that. Not only affects the health of the child and the family, but imagine you're being a parent and not being able to afford $1,000 a month. 
not only... Now, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Republican Leader Mitch McConnell said they are still working on a solution for raising the federal debt ceiling. As the Congressional Budget Office delivered another warning that, that the government is at risk of losing out on a lot of money. The Senate leader spoke as the Congressional Budget Office echoed a warning by Treasury Secretary Jan Yellen that the federal government is at risk of defaulting on obligations after mid-December without action being done by Congress. The Congressional Budget Office also noted that the Treasury plans to transfer $118 billion to the Highway Trust Fund on December 15th. And that's a move that allows the passage of President Biden's infrastructure package earlier this month. According to the Congressional Budget Office, if the debt limit remained unchanged and if the Treasury made that transfer in full, the government's ability to borrow using extraordinary measures would be exhausted soon after it made the transfer. Yellen has reiterated her call to lawmakers to address the debt limit. And Senator Durbin, the number two Democratic leader, said the Congressional Budget Office did not estimate the calculation for leaders pushing for a debt limit hike by mid-month. So the discussions between the Senate's top two leaders are aimed at a finding at finding a smoother path to addressing the debt ceiling, following an October clash in the chamber that has started to rattle financial markets before a short-term increase was ultimately approved. In the House, Danny Horace said he's confident that the House could carry legislation, raising the debt limit just as it did the last time around. And now millions of Americans are expected to receive stimulus payments around Christmas time by way of the local state governments. Some state issue their own stimulus checks and others are even providing universal basic income payments. California has been sending checks via its second Golden State Stimulus Package over the last few months. Gavin Newsom implemented a state stimulus program several months ago by utilizing California's progressive tax scheme, one which allowed for a state surplus to fund the program. Another check is also expected before the end of the year. And California is on track to have a $31 billion surplus for the budget year beginning July 1st, 2022. This can mean more stimulus payments for residents of California. Florida is also planning to issue stimulus checks in December to first responders, pre-K, and 12th grade teachers, and those who meet the financial requirements to receive a one-time check of $1,000. The state stimulus program for teachers is an attempt at retaining school staff after a particularly hard year for education sector workers. Maine has also been sending out stimulus payments via the state government since November 15th. The checks in the amount of $285 have been distributed to over 500 people. In addition, Maryland is sending stimulus checks to low-income families and individuals. Qualifying families will receive $500, individuals will receive $300. Certain cities are also issuing their own forms of stimulus, details of which are providing the following. And there's more details on this in the future. Thank you again for your support, everybody. I truly appreciate your forts. I truly appreciate everybody's amazing support. If you have any more questions about the Ford Stimulus check, be sure to leave them in the comments below.